Gematria. Honestly, love, it doesn't actually mean you're going to die. The card reader had just turned over the death card, number 13 in the tarot pack. There, on the card, was a skull with the roses coming out of the empty eye sockets, painted lusciously in crimson, black and gold. The reader was smiling, and then, as she pulled the next card and revealed it with the flourish of her elegant black gelled fingernails, the psychic gave a brief sigh. Number 16 now. The tower struck down. Alicia Simons, pretty and petite, well turned out and generally wise to the world, knew enough about the tarot to see she had just been dealt death and destruction, one after the other. The psychic sat back and smiled, abandoning the cards on her red velvet tablecloth. The room they sat in was the basement of a psychic shop near Victoria, London, more Pimlico to be honest. An incense stick burned, sending a straight column of Palo Santo-scented smoke to the dirty ceiling. The place here was pretty cool. The psychic, Roseanne, was pretty cool. Alicia had good reports of her from her friend Emily. Roseanne's lips were painted crimson, her eyes cold to within an inch of their life, and full black hair that fell in dreadlocks down her back. Roseanne said, No, love, people get this wrong. The death card doesn't mean a literal death, it means an ending. And the tower is a sudden change of state. Nothing to worry about. But Alicia was still uneasy. And remember, Roseanne said, what's meant for you won't go past you. She leant forward and put her hand on Alicia's. I'm talking about the love interest. That's why Alicia had visited her in the first place. There was a guy at work, terribly artistic, dark-haired, black hair on his forearms as he played his guitar. He was in a band and Alicia and the work girls had gone to see them play in Camden. She thought he liked her, but wasn't sure, hence the visit to Pimlico. Alicia sighed. I hope you're right, she said. Fortunately, these thoughts of Michelle, he was French, had driven previous worries about the death card from her mind. Number 13. Unlucky for some. Alicia paid via Roseanne's portable card reader, picked up a bag and just as she was leaving the room... Roseanne said haltingly, Another thing, I sense flowers. Then she smiled, Yes, you'll definitely be sent some flowers today. That put a spring in Alicia's step. She hoped the flowers were from Michelle. It was Friday and she had a day off. She worked as a nurse at the Royal Free at Hampstead and Michelle was one of the gastro registrars there, as well as being the lead guitarist of an indie band. As she came out of Roseanne's flat, the weather was foul. Rain drove across the sky, sending Alicia scurrying into the shelter of nearby buildings. She glanced back. The house she'd just come out of was at number 13. She laughed to herself as she put up her umbrella. Stupid. It was just that she was sensitised to the number 13 and she was seeing it everywhere. It was certainly no day for wandering round central London, so she thought she'd go back home to North Finchley. She had plenty of time and she quite liked going overground so she planned to catch the bus rather than the tube home. She decided she would start to keep a journal, so she popped into a paper chase and got a light to dotted one. She went to the counter and paid with a card. Sixteen pounds, the assistant said. Alicia paid with her card. Sixteen quid was a bit steep, but it was paper chase and it was light to and it was Victoria Station, so what did she expect? She got herself a coffee, which again was expensive, and sipped it while she waited for the bus. The bus came, a big red double-decker. It would take her all the way home to North Finchley from Victoria. And then, as she read the destination on the front, she realised it was a number 13. She felt a twinge of anxiety. It didn't mean anything. It was just a coincidence. She'd caught this bus before and nothing had happened. She paid with her Oyster card. She didn't know how much she had left on it and she didn't want to check, in case it was £13. After loading up, the bus started off. It was an electric bus and very quiet as it went down behind Buckingham Palace. Alicia put her earphones in and watched the rain streak down the bus windows. 
There was something melancholy and nice about drifting through London, stopping and starting, knowing she had ages before she had to get off. They stopped at Grosvenor Square by the American Embassy. British police with machine guns stood on the corners. Closer to the Embassy, armed US Marines were positioned around the building, and above them, US flags fluttered in the wind. Idly, she looked at the flag. It was very colourful with the stars and stripes. Idly, she counted the stripes. She knew it before she had finished. There were thirteen of them. Her heart beat faster. Why couldn't she get the number thirteen out of her head? She googled the American flag. Apparently, the thirteen stripes were for the original thirteen colonies when they broke free of Britain. See, perfectly rational, she told herself. But she still couldn't swallow properly. She felt hot. All these thirteens were just a coincidence like she'd already decided it was just because she was sensitised to it. Alicia thought about getting off the number 13 bus. Maybe seeing these 13s was a sign that it would have a crash. But that was stupid, it was just superstition. There was nothing intrinsic about the number 13 that made it unlucky, just an old wives' tale. Still, she felt her palms go clammy. At Hyde Park Corner, a student came and sat down next to her, wearing a black donkey jacket type coat that was wet with rain. He was apologetic, and though he'd taken in her looks, was well-mannered and ignored her rather than staring or trying to make conversation. She could tell he was a student because he was reading a big textbook as he sat on the bus, her mind calmed as it mused about the student. Then she saw the book was about mathematics, something about the Fibonacci sequence. She'd heard of it, but knew nothing about it. The student flicked through the pages. He wasn't reading it properly, just skimming. And it looked like he'd just got the book because he was at the start. She looked and saw that he had his finger on the page to hold it down. And she could see from where she sat that it was page 13. 13. A sign. This was totally nuts. Alicia cleared her throat. She had to know. Excuse me, she said. The student looked at her and blinked with soft cow brown eyes. He wasn't handsome, but he seemed nice. From his expression, he couldn't believe that a pretty blonde girl had started a conversation with him. Yes, he said. What's the Fibonacci sequence? Ah, the student said with a grin. Not only was this bonny blonde girl talking to him, but she was interested in maths. He began a long, overly detailed explanation. Alicia felt panic in her fingers and in her chest. Just tell me. What, what? he said. Is 13 a Fibonacci number? He nodded. Yes, the numbers are 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. You get them by adding the two previous numbers together, except for 0, of course. So the next would be, then she remembered. Today was Friday the 13th. Alicia abruptly stood. Excuse me, she had to get off. She couldn't think straight. Her pulse pounded in her ears. Of course, the student said, bewildered and moved as she pushed past him. Alicia pressed the button that indicated to the driver that she wanted to get off. They were on Park Road, just running west of Regent's Park. She scanned her memory of London geography. She could walk down Regent's Canal and get to Camden and take the northern line up to Finchley. She stepped off the number 13 bus with a palpable sense of relief. It was drizzling, but she had her coat and her umbrella. She knew that you could get to the canal towpath across the road to the right. The entrance was between two buildings and hard to see. She peered through the rain and nearly went past it, but she saw a wooden finger post with a number 16 cycle route marked on it for Camden. At least it wasn't the number 13 cycle route. She wouldn't have walked there if it was. Soon Alicia was walking alongside the Regent's Canal. The canal was full of drifting autumn leaves. There was the odd jogger, and a barge sailed past her at one point, chugging along with its diesel engine. Alicia had her head down. The weather was so bad she knew it would be dark soon, but she just had to walk along the canal and then get up by the zoo bridge so she could walk on to Camden Town Tube. At least the tube trains didn't have numbers. As she walked, she thought about how she'd spooked herself. These past few days she'd been uncharacteristically nervous. She should maybe see someone about it, She knew Andrea from Cycle Liaison at work, but all these thirteens were just stupid. She would just pull herself together and it would be fine. There seemed fewer people now. The weather seemed to have put the runners off and there were no more barges going by. 
The canal path lay with a steep grassy bank to the left behind a scrubby screen of trees. On the right were some grand houses, and then she came within sight of the zoo. The animals were keeping out of the rain too. It smelled old and damp, of leaves and soil and wood and dank canals. She shivered. It was getting colder. The clouds lay heavy above, and there was no sign of the rain easing off. In fact, it seemed to be getting heavier. She hurried on. Alicia shuddered as she saw two brown rats scuttle off to the left. This canal path went on for ages. She didn't remember it being so long. A sense of doom fell over her. She felt as if something dreadful was going to happen. She told herself it was all psychological and that a chat with Andrea would put it into perspective. Still, the tarot death card number 13 on Friday the 13th and then the number 13 bus... It was freaky. The grey concrete animal houses of the zoo on the right-hand bank had spaces for the animals to come right out down to the canal. Most of the animals were in. There were some ring-tailed lemurs out. She wouldn't Google how many rings the lemurs had on their tails. She almost did, but she told herself it was stupid. What if it was thirteen? So what? This was just her nerves playing tricks on her. She got to the floating Chinese restaurant and this was where she left the canal towpath and came up to street level. She was soaked despite her coat and umbrella. The rain just wouldn't give up. She walked along St Mark's Square. She would have to dry off a little and catch the tube a bit later. She nipped into a cafe bar to her left, shaking her umbrella into an umbrella stand and hanging up her coat on the peg. Terrible weather, the barman said. He was handsome, looked Greek, dark like Michelle but heavier built. She smiled to herself. Then she remembered what Roseanne the psychic had said about her getting flowers. That cheered her up. Had an enjoyable day, the barman said. Awful, he laughed. I won't ask. What can I get you? Alicia thought. She recognised the song in the background as being by Neil Sedaka. The barman mouthed the words absentmindedly as he waited for her order. Happy birthday, sweet sixteen. She said, y you know what, it's my day off, I'm wet and pissed off, so I'll have a beer. It was unusual for her to want a beer, but that seemed to appeal to her right now. A beer? What would you like? She knew what she wanted, the beer with a nice blue and gold label. She didn't know what it was, but somehow that's the one she wanted. That one, she said. Ah, Cronenberg 1664, that's nice, the barman said. Yes, I'll have that. So some 1664. He emphasised the number, as if she didn't look like a regular Cronenberg drinker. Alicia frowned. I'm not usually a beer drinker, but I just fancy it. Must be calling out to you. He poured the cold beer and she drank half of it straight off. Then she swallowed the rest. You were thirsty. Want another? No, actually, I better be going. My loss. She laughed and went to pay with the card, but it wasn't authorised. Sorry, she said. He said, probably our machine. She said, trouble is, I don't have any cash. There's a cash machine over the road. OK, I'll just nip out. Sure. Then at the door, she said, I will come back. I won't run off without paying. Sure, sure, she blushed. Honestly, don't worry, I've got your number. She thought he was being serious, then saw his grin. Be right back, she said, grabbing her umbrella because it was still raining. The machine was on the other side of the road. Alicia picked her way through the stream of cars to cross the street got to the machine and put in her pin. And as she did so, the coincidence of numbers struck her again. Her card pin was 1316. She shuddered, snatched the cash and tried to laugh it off. Turning back, Alicia got to the curb and looked both ways. An unexpected gust of wind turned her umbrella inside out, making her unable to see at the instant she stepped out onto the road. The van hit her. It was going too fast. She wasn't looking. It was a flower delivery van. It braked, lost control, skidded and slammed into her, the door coming open, spilling flowers all over. The van's registration was TWR 16S. Stricken and dying, covered in bloody flowers, Alicia had visions of the death and then the tower struck down, card number 13 and card number 16 and she heard Roseanne the psychic's words echoing in her ears. Yes, you'll definitely be sent some flowers today. Thirteen, four, seven, 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 seven
That was Gematria from my London Horror Stories collection. I'll say something about the story. So this is from the uh, London Horror Stories collection. I think that time flies, you know, but probably about 18 months, two years ago, it came out. And I wrote a whole bunch of new stories that were inspired by, you know, I lived in London for a bit, so they were inspired by that. And then we did a trip to London. Well, it's drawn in three components, really. There's the new age stuff. And I, I visited a lot of things like that due to my partner being very into it, okay? So I'm familiar with this card reading scene. I may, yeah, draw your own conclusions. And then the next thing is uh, the brainy bus ride is a thing that I definitely used to do when I lived in London. Sometimes if I had time, I would get the bus. I lived up in North Finchley at the time. And I would, I, it was fantastic just ambling through London. I did one of my sleep stories on this in a nice way. The rainy bus ride, it is called. Um, so that is, nothing bad happens in that one. It's really good. You can fall asleep to it. That's what it's intended for. And then the third bit was we had a very wet walk along the Regent's Canal by the zoo. So some of it's drawn from that. And then we went for a cup of coffee in Camden and it was absolutely tipping it down. But we didn't buy any um, flowers. Oh no, she didn't buy any flowers. Or Cronenberg as far as I can tell. As far as I remember. No, it was coffee all the way. So there we go. And the idea was, the twist in the end is that it's, she gets sensitised to the number 13, unlucky for some, but it is not the number 13 that comes to get her in the end. Okay, that is the twist. It's not a very clever twist, but it is a twist. So hopefully you weren't anticipating that little 13 to 18 shuffle. Gematria is the ancient Hebrew art of m magic and divination through adding numbers together, so the significance of numbers, numerology. So the 13 card, of course, unlucky for some, is... And in fact, um, there's no number 13 on the street I live on. I live in 11, next door's 15. Even numbers are across the other side of the street. So there you go. And that's it, really. A, a rainy bus ride, some numbers and a twist. And that was it. And I'm sorry about the poor girl dying, but, you know, it is a horror story. Can you imagine a horror story where nothing bad happens to anybody? It's just sunny and everybody goes for a picnic. And, and in the picnic... There is not even any tongue sandwiches. It's just things that they like. So that would be a lovely story, but it wouldn't be a horror story, you know? You need some threat in this. And I think if you went to the cinema, you read books and there was no threat, nothing happened, no arguments, no drama, you would put the book down. That is what drama is about. Anyway, I nearly went into a second diatribe then. So, you know, listen to my diatribe if you want. If you don't, don't. That's all cool. Anyway, for those who are... Ardent supporters of the channel, I'm really pleased to have you on board. You've, it, you, this has meant so much to me. But I found the more people get exposed to your work, the more divided views there are. Um, and you know, people come down in two camps, and that is, that's just life, isn't it? So anyway, I'm actually all right, don't get me wrong, I'm just a bit narky this morning. And I don't know why, because it hasn't been a bad day. Yeah, I had a nice cup of coffee, had some hummus and some... Feta cheese, it's a, like a Greek lunch. Anyway, ramble. Okay, all right, there we are. More stories soon, I promise. Two,